Our soloist for Beethoven's Piano Concerto Number no. 2 is the Chinese pianist Xiaohui Yang, grand prize winner of the prestigious 2017 Naumburg International Piano Competition. Ms. Yang has graced the stages of major concert halls around the world with recitals and other performances in Carnegie Hall, Baltimore's Schreiber Hall, and Ozawa Hall, New Jersey Performing Arts Center, Tel Aviv Museum of Art, and the Seoul Arts Center. Ms. Yang was born in the Chinese town of Liaoning and came to the U.S. to attend the Curtis Institute of Music, where she was awarded Curtis's Festorazzi Prize for the Best Graduating Piano Student, a signal honor indeed. Now, Jonathan Pilevsky in conversation with Xiaohui Yang. It's so nice to meet you and uh, welcome back into the country. You told me you were just in Brazil. Yes. <laughs> How nice is that? You're now, of course, on the professional circuit. You've won lots of competitions, uh, but tell me a bit about where you trained. I studied in China um, since I was nine years old. Mm -hmm. um, Whereabouts? Um, Northern China. Mm -hmm. my, my hometown is near Mongolia. Mm -hmm. But that's not where I studied the piano because there's there's no piano teachers, good piano teachers <laughs> in my hometown. So I, I left home and I went to a different city. Um, um, and I studied there since I was nine years old until 16, I believe. Yeah, for, for eight years. And then I came to the States um, in 2008. And you went to Curtis? Yeah, I went to Curtis and then um, I, I was at Curtis for five years and then I went to Juilliard for two years for my master's. Um, afterwards, um, uh, I, I came to Peabody and I'm still working on my BMA there. Two of your significant teachers are Russian, uh, Ignat Solzhenitsyn at Curtis and Boris Lutsky at Peabody. They're both products of the old Soviet system and they do things a very interesting and specific way. Uh, can you talk a bit about that? Yeah, um, I think I'm really lucky that I met each of my teacher. Um, when I met Mr. Solzhenitsyn, I was 16 years old. And I remember at first, um, we, we exchanged several emails before I even came to the States. And he asked me to pick a Mozart sonata. And that's how I started. And guess what? We worked on just one particular Mozart sonata for two months. He just wouldn't let go because he's like you're not listening you're not listening so she's super super particular with articulations um and the style which i i guess i've paid attention to those those details before but it was never this specific and after those two months i i have to say that the way i listen to things completely changed with mr slusky is the same his artistry is just so admirable and I've, I've just I have huge respect for for him mm -hmm. I'm just curious apropos of nothing do you play the last three Schubert sonatas I have played a major uh, the C minor a major I just finished a podcast on the the Schubert a major wow. uh, oh, the big one the big one yeah the big the 959 yeah. and uh what an incredible piece. I, I, I love it. And the, the, I mean, it's just it's such a wild piece, you know? Yeah, I nuts. Still remember, I, rem I mean, I learned that piece, I think, um, my fourth year at Curtis. And oh my God, I suffered so much <laughs> and ah. for a good reason, obviously. Yeah. Like, so with Mr. Sojournalism, I had to play everything. I, I, like, I had to do every single repeat right and you know how long that piece is right? yes <laughs> and then I performed it um I think my performance was around 45 minutes long mm. with all the repeats and wow and I remember after first movement I, I was like my goodness this is only first movement and <laughs> I heard somebody <laughs> trying to get out of the door I said like, yeah now we'll see how many people will yeah, who will be here, left? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, who will be who left? Will be left here? at the end of this rondo. Oh yeah. My God. Wow. Yeah, that was that was an experience. Yeah. <laughs> Something I've never experienced before. Oh, wow. Um, you're playing the Ravel Sonatine uh, on uh, the tape that we're going to be looking at. Uh, 
this was a piece he wrote for a competition, and I think the initial movement had to be 75 bars, uh, or, yeah. or he would lose, right? Yes, I think so. I think, I think, yeah, that's, I think that's the story. So, I mean, I've read that long time ago. But yeah, yeah. The difficulty for me um, on Ravel's music is to find the sound. It's, it's, it's like, it's obviously, um, we use the word impressionistic, right? Um, at the same time, it has a very clear sound into it. So it cannot be just like, vague color or soft it's like it's almost like like um like um a drop of water you know mm -hmm. like a drop of water and if you look into it there's this like tiny shining point into it and then i think for me that is the hardest part to find the the right sound <laughs> no, I I, uh, I want to thank you very much for for uh, spending a bit of time with us. And now we have the pleasure of hearing you play the Ravel Sonatine, uh, which I enjoyed very much. And uh, I've enjoyed very much speaking with you as well. Oh, thank you very much. Likewise, I okay. really been enjoying the conversations a lot. <laughs> a pleasure. Stay safe. And and thank you once again for uh, for some really nice conversation. Thank you very much. Stay safe.
We are all looking forward to hearing Xiao Hui Yang performing Beethoven's second piano concerto in the upcoming Baltimore Chamber Orchestra 2021-2022 season. And please join us again in two weeks for Rebecca Smithhorn's investigation of the Masters Piano Concerto Number 3, which we will hear next season on our third subscription concert. <laughs>